Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. We thank God for thank you, this space and opportunity in the building. Yes. We thank God for him just moving and allowing us safe travels up here. Amen. All the way from Ironton, Ohio. Amen. We thank God for our family coming with us. Amen. Yes. Uh, and the personage of our bishop, uh, Bishop Raymond Coleman and Lady Coleman, and all of our saints that came along with us. But I must, I must, I must honor this man and woman of God here in this house. None other than our newfound family, that being Bishop Murray. Come on, put your hands together. <laughs> We have the blessing of a wonderful, wonderful, and loving shepherd. Amen. For mine. You have been truly blessed. Because, see, I, I can tell you, not all pastors are going to share the love the way that he does. Amen. See, see, sometimes you think that love just means that they're going to hold and kiss you and rub your boo boos and all this and that and the other. But love also means that they're going to correct you. That they're going to instruct you. That they're going to teach you. Hello, somebody. My God, my God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We thank God for a man, this co pastor here, the co co deliverer of the word today. Amen. The co speaker. God bless you. 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 God Bishop Calloway being in the house. God bless you, Mr. God. And Lady Calloway, God bless you. We thank God for them surprising us and showing up. Amen. But what a wonderful blessing. And I would be remiss to miss the Queen of my castle. That's right. That's right, brother. Huh? That's right. When all else is said and done. Huh? When all else is said and done. Yes, sir. The Lady of my house. That's right. That's right. That's right. I want to have peace in my house when I get there. Amen. Amen. Hello, somebody. None other than Lady Evangelist Burris. Give her a hand. Peace to give you also all the women and the elders. Elder Spillman, Elder Pryor. I'm so sorry, but this elder as well. God bless you, men and women of God. Amen. Amen. Let us look to the Lord. We'll go move on into our assignment. We don't want to hold up progress. Amen. Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you. We praise you. We worship you. We yeah. adore you, God. Before we yeah. do anything else, yeah. we just want to say thank you. thank you. God, we just want to tell you just how much we love you, oh God. Yeah. God, because we know that you loved us first, and God, we can never repay the debt that you have already, Lord God, paid for us. But God, we just serve you. We praise you. We worship you. Yes. Now, Father God, we ask that you would hide us behind the cross. Yes. God, that you would allow only you to be seen, God. Allow Napoleon to decrease and that you may increase, God. Speak to me, God. Speak through me. Speak on my behalf in the name of Jesus. Lord, and when everything is said and done, we ask that you and you alone be glorified. God, and that body of Christ be edified. And the devil in hell himself be horrified. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise. My assignment today, my assignment has been for the heritage word. Amen. If you would, turn in your Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 1. We're going to read in your hearing verses 1 through 5. When you have it, all those who can and will, we ask that you would rest to your feet in honor of the reading of the word of God. Amen. Yeah. That is 2 Timothy chapter 1, mm -hmm. verses 1 through 7. And the word of the Lord reads, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve, oh my God, 
for my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. Mm -hmm. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Yeah, May you yeah, see it in the yeah. presence of the Lord. May God have a blessing to the reading and the reader and the hearers of the word of God. Amen. Now, this is not the scripture that I'll be preaching from. That's right. Let the Lord use it. This is not the scripture that I'll be preaching from. This is what my assignment was, which I promise goes along with it. Mm -hmm. But understand that here in this portion of scripture, that Timothy is receiving a letter from his father yeah. in the spirit. Uh -huh. Amen, somebody. Amen. He's receiving a letter that encourages him to, hallelujah, to stir up the gift that's uh -huh. within him. But first, he, had, he acknowledges the heritage that of the line, the lineage that he came from, from his grandmother and his mother, that they had faith. Yes. That they had unwavering faith. Yes. And so understand that this is the heritage that he has been established in as being a man of faith. Yes. And in, in this instance, Paul recognizes that. It's his purpose to make sure that we understand that he comes from a heritage of faith. Right. So I ask you, what is your heritage? What is your heritage? Well, we've heard a beautiful reading from co-pastor First Lady Arnise that tells about the heritage and the legacy of this church. It talks about it being here and established for 145 years, yeah. which is an amazing accomplishment. Yeah. We can't say that we know anything very yeah. much other than a few churches and the country itself that's been established that long. Yeah. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Because every day things are rising up and falling, falling yeah. sometimes yeah. in the same day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God, my God. Y'all yeah. stick with me. I promise we'll bless you. So understand that you are a part of a great heritage and legacy, which we must make sure that we recognize. Mm -hmm. You are part, a, part of a legacy of love. That's right. A legacy of love. Understand that what God said was love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Yeah. And I can honestly say, even from what I've experienced in this short period of time, that you truly love your neighbors. Yeah. Because y'all don't know me from Adam. Yeah. But I have been told multiple times that I love you. Yeah. Brother, I love you. Pastor, I love you. And I can say okay. with a surety and from the bottom of my heart, I love you too. Yeah. Praise God. You better understand your heritage because see, this is what it will. It, it, this is what will carry you over. This is what will get you through. This is what will allow you to be established and remain for another 145 years, if God tarries. That's right. That's right. Uh, Y'all ain't gonna mess with me today. I promise. But 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 understand that heritage itself means an inheritance. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Something that has been inherited. Something that is a prized possession my, 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 my. that you have held on to and secured for yourself. Yeah. Something that has been passed on from generation to generation to generation. Yeah. It is the legacy that you live. All right. All right. All right. So I, I must I must implore you today that you walk in your inheritance. Yeah. All right. So if we were to have a topic for our message, it is walk in your inheritance. All right. The scripture that God has given me for this message is actually in Ephesians. Uh -huh. Which is amazing because, see, these two 
different epistles tied one to the other. That's right. Because see, Paul gave instruction to Timothy and said, when you receive this letter, yes. share it on to the churches that we have established, yes. including the church of Ephesus. That's right. Yes. Come on, somebody. You better know your Bible. If you don't read your Bible, I'm telling you, please read your Bible. Yes. But here in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 23, I'm not going to read them all. But I implore you, please read them in your own time so that you will understand exactly what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But I will read in your hearing, starting at... <coughs> trying to cut it down. We'll start at verse 9, I'm sorry. Because this one is going to have to, we don't have to do it. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1, starting at verse 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained and what? Inheritance being what predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ in whom he also trusted. Mm -hmm. After that he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation in whom also after he believed he were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. My God, I, I'm preaching already. I'm just reading the word. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. I wish you could catch it right here. But understand, people of God, that you have an inheritance that you must walk in. Now, what is that inheritance? Mm -hmm. That inheritance, and, and we're going to go through the rest of that. I'm sorry we got to. But that inheritance was the promise of the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. yeah. That Holy Ghost is what? That Holy Ghost is that same spirit that Jesus gave up on the cross. The Holy Ghost yeah. is the same spirit that he told you that he would come back and send back for your comfort so that you could be able to understand the word of God and hear the word of God and yeah. preach the word of God and teach the word of God and feel the word of God because he is the living word. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right now. 12 says that we should be the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom he also trusted after that he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that he believed. Mm -hmm. He were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased, purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, there's that heritage again, your faith in the Lord Jesus. He told Timothy that you have faith that comes down along the line of your heritage from your mother and your grandmother. And he tells the church of Ephesus, I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But then he goes one step further and he incorporates fellowship of love right here. He says, and love unto all the saints. I'm preaching now in the universe. Love in all the saints. My God Almighty, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of our Lord of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of his of the glory of his inheritance and the saints. See, we think riches, hallelujah be to God, is what you carry around in your pocket and your wallet. We think riches is what you drive up into the church paper. We think riches is what you go home to to your house that you might be paying for a rent. We think riches is all this stuff that we acquire in this world. But riches is in the saints of God. Understand, understand. 
him that the riches of the glory of his, his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of power, of his power, to us who believe? That's yes. right. Amen. That's right. Power to us who believe. Uh -huh. Do you understand what the word of God is saying? Uh -huh. That if you believe on God, yeah. Yeah. that's right. If you, if you believe God, then his power rests inside of you because of the promise of oh my God of the Holy Spirit that we have received. Walking heavy, brother. My God, my God. Oh, my God. Mm, mm, mm. According mm. to the working of his mighty power, yes. which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him, pay attention to this, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but but also in that which is to come and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church <laughs> which is his body the fullness of him that filleth all in all yes 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 Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Yeah. I'm trying to encourage this. <laughs> People of God, oh. we are some of the world's worst Jesus. at leaving an inheritance. Yeah. Hello, yeah. hello. Yeah. Yeah. We leave this world yeah. and don't leave nothing behind but a bunch of bills, yeah. a bunch of mess. A bunch of distress, a bunch of heartache and hurt. People of God, if you don't start lining up with the word of God and understand that it is your duty to be the inheritance, it ain't got to be stuff. It can be the love of God. It ain't got to be things. It can be the spirit of God that lives inside of you. It ain't got to be the world stuff. same power that walked the earth in Jesus Christ is the very same power that dwells on the inside. Why is it that you think he said greater works than these shall you do? Oh my God. Oh my God. It's the very same power that he had that he possessed is the same power that you have, yeah. that you possess. Oh my God in heaven. And I wish that I could get somebody to leave an inheritance of power. I wish I could get somebody to leave an inheritance of faith. I wish I could get somebody to leave an inheritance of faith. My God, my God. Yes. God, people of God. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, understand that he tells us right here in this very last portion of scripture. He said all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, uh, my, which is his body. It's his body. The fullness we are his body and the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Yeah. Oh my God. All in all. So understand that if Christ is the head of the church yeah. and we are his body, well, that right there proves to you 
scripturally that everything that dwelled in Christ also dwells in you. That's why you're supposed to do great. See, we got stuck on Acts 1 and 8. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you to be witnesses in Judea and Samaria and all these other places. But understand, God requires more than that. We got stuck, hallelujah, just at the hem of his garment. We were satisfied with a hearing. We were satisfied with a blessing. We were satisfied with a miracle from God. Because he God didn't call you to stay at the hem. Thank <laughs> you. 
says that when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, and I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Understand, people of God, that God is calling you to put away childish things. It's time for us to mature and walk in our inheritance. It's time for us to grow up.